Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jared and today we are going to be taking a closer look and conducting a full review on the Benchmade 940 Osborne. And this particular variant is the Blade HQ exclusive featuring the M4 steel. And we also have a bit of a different scale configuration here. We have the Flytanium, Stonewash Titanium scales cool so let's just get things started with some stats real quick we are coming in at a total weight of 2.65 ounces now that is not including these scales that's going to be with the factory scales which are the j to g tens on the blade hq exclusives so just keep that in mind so we are coming in at 2.65 ounces we have a total length of 7.87 inches with a handle length of 4.47 inches. We have a blade length of 3.4 inches, and like I said earlier, we are featuring M4 steel, which is really, really good stuff. The blade type is a reverse Tonto, and the blade stock thickness is 120 thousandths. Now, this guy right here is this knife is probably about as well known in the knife community as the PM2. In fact, there's a lot of, you know, debates between these two as to which one is the best, which I think is kind of a dumb, it's kind of like apples and oranges just because these knives, in my opinion, have two very different functions. I mean, let's look at the tip and check that out first of all. This is a, you know, with the blade steel aside, look at how chonky that tip is, right? Now let's add the fact that this is M4. I could probably shove this into, I don't know, like some really hard wood. Oh, God. <laughs> that sounds awful. And then twist it. And I don't think I would really get that much tip damage. I mean, and I think I'm really glad that they decided to make this variant in, um, in M4. Or they decided to release a 940 in the M4 blade steel just because I think that it's um I think that it's a steel that matches this platform very very well so this is kind of regarded um in the community as like a very hard to use workers knife and you can definitely see why just I mean the just in the G the blade geometry I mean this is a big what the some dust coming off it is a very very stout very very sturdy piece of steel and m4 blade steel uh just a quick little note about that it's very similar to 4v and m4 and 4v blade steel is the type of steel that they use for competition chopping so just to give you um, an idea of, and, and, and really, I think M4 is probably one of the best steels. If not, I, I'm going to go as far to say it is my favorite steel. Now, I, said, I know I say that a lot on this channel, like M390 or, or 20CV, one of my favorite steels. No, M4 is, without a doubt, my favorite tool steel. And it's just um, the edge retention and, the, you know, the uh, its ability to take a mirror edge and retain it. And just the toughness of it, you know, it's almost like we're getting S110V in terms of the blade or the um, the edge retention, but we're not getting any of the negative qualities like the chipping or the cracking, you know, like that. that's usually the trade-offs. Between these super tough super steels, you get just out of this world edge retention, but, you know, if you drop it or if you, you know, God forbid if you use your knife to pry or anything like that, you're going to get chips and cracks. Well, that's not really the case with M4. M4 kind of brings kind of brings everything to the table. Um, the only thing that M4 really doesn't bring to the table is going to be corrosion resistance, which is, you know, that, that's a really, um, I would say, like, area-specific or, like, you know, application-specific issue. You know, if you're not going to be working near a lot of water or if, you know, the area, the particular area in which you live isn't very humid or if you're just not a sweaty individual or if you just plan on uh, keeping a very constant upkeep on your knives with oiling and cleaning and whatnot, 
then it really isn't going to matter what type of steel you have. And some people like the patina, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Now, one of the things that I really do like about this knife that I think Benjamin did a phenomenal job with is the finish on the blade. I think this is Cerakote. Not 100% sure. I'm almost positive with that Cerakote. If it's not, let me know down in the comments, guys. But I love this finish as opposed to Spider Co.'s DLC finish. As you can see, there's marks on this. And it marks very easily. And, you know, it might not be a big deal for some. But for others, it can be a big deal. But with this, the Cerakote, or whatever they use on this finish, it's very, very... Um, it doesn't mark very easily, doesn't take fingerprints very easily, and it's easy to clean. I could just wipe this off, and um, it would just pretty much look brand new, as opposed to with the DLC. If I wipe this off, it would take a little bit of... It's a little bit of work to get back. Well, I actually did. Oh, there it is, yeah. So, it's not really a huge thing. It's just like a little one of those little nitpicky things. Um... Let's see, a um, couple of things that I don't like about this knife, right? So, I don't like the fact that we use all T6s on the body. That That's almost a, like a, that, that is a big deal breaker for me. And I say that because these are the scales that came with its stock, and these are the stock screws, as you can see. And that is a stock standoff that I have not been, I, I, I can't get it off. I'm completely stripped out. And when it comes to opening, disassembling, and maintaining your knives, guys, I am the most cautious. I use the best bits. I use soldering irons. Um, so I, I use a soldering iron to heat up the Loctite so I can reduce the likelihood of doing something like this. And with the T6 screws, you know, on a pocket clip, it's not that bad because you, just because there isn't going to be, you know, there doesn't need to be a whole lot of pressure, so to speak, with the pocket clips. So T6s on the pocket clips, whatever, that's okay. But on the body screws, if you're going to be doing a lot, you know, they just wear out over time. They just do. It's just even under the best circumstances, they're just going to wear out. It just happens. But with these – um, and now I know with Benjamin's warranty – I can literally send these right in and I'll get brand new everything for the most part. Oh, excuse me. Brand new everything for the most part. And, um, you know, that, that that is one of the nicer parts about Benjamin, in my opinion. But at the same time, like, you know, what if this was my only knife? What if this was my only work knife at that? You know, and I needed this. Am I going to be able to go two weeks without this? You know, who knows? So that's really the only nitpick thing. Um, a lot of people don't like this knife because they say that it's just not slicey enough. Um, now, I'm going to agree. It isn't very slicey. But I'm also going to go as far to say that, like, you know, it, it wasn't designed to be like that. Like, if you're looking for, like, a more slicey knife, like, you know, try out the PM2 maybe try out something with a that was designed for that. I mean, even if we were to do a steeper hollow grind here, right? Or I guess um I guess a more flat or yeah, more of a flat grind here. Um it still wouldn't be very slicey just because of the blade geometry. Like if you just look at the blade geometry in this, it's very plain Jane. It's very simple and straightforward. It's look how large look it the percentage of the knife that is just a flat edge, right? This knife is not meant to be slicey. It, it just it just isn't. Now it could be like you know I have seen nine forties that have been reground. They look good. They look good. They do. But I you know I I have my, like a lot of reservations about people that say, oh the PM two sucks because it can't do this or the nine forty sucks because it can't do that. And in my mind I'm like okay like. You know, use the right tool for the job, okay? Like, just because a knife, just because this knife has a thicker blade stock and the thickness behind the edge is not, you know, very um, inducive for 
you know, slicing and whatnot, doesn't mean that it's going to be incapable of doing certain slicing and like push cuts and things like that. It just means that it's not going to be as slicey as say, I don't know, something that has like a very like thin blade stock thickness like this. Like I think we have 98 thousandths of an inch with this. And, you know, the blade geometry is much different. There's more of a belly, which inherently is going to be a better shape for slicing. But all in all, I um, I really do like this knife. Um, it's the only Benchmade that I have. Um, I find whenever I'm doing any, like, hard, like okay, so in my backyard, um, we have some fencing that constantly needs to be upkept because we have, we've got a Great Dane and a Black Lab, and they like to... Uh, they like to mess with our very old, very uh, wood rot, dry rotted fence. So, uh, you know, a lot of times I'm like prying out staples or I'm actually like, you know, just, I'm, I'm just, this is the knife that I use if I know I'm going to be doing any type of construction or any type of like, if I don't know what I'm going to be getting myself into, but I know I'm going to be needing a knife. I usually bring this because this pretty much has me covered. And another thing I also like about this knife is the carry profile. And again, I'm going to be using the PM2 as a comparison because these are the, you know, if you were to take a poll, what are the two most, you know, the two gold standards for EDC carries? Majority wise, you're going to get the PM2 and the 940. So that's why we're comparing these. This carries a lot nicer in the pocket than this does. I mean, I don't even really have to do that, but you can see why. And from a weight perspective as well. So all in all, that is pretty much all that I have to say about the, um, well, the locking mechanism is, um, I've heard stories about, you know, people having the axis lock, like these little springs fail on them within like a month or so. I've had this maybe for two to three months and I've, I've put this thing through some hard use and the lock feels fine. But again, you know, I guess I didn't even really talk about the value with this. I think this was around 200 bucks. Um, and in my mind, I think I think I think that is worth it because the Benchmade warranty is phenomenal. I've never had to use it, but I've heard from enough people, read from enough reliable sources that if anything were to happen, like you know, for example, like I could send I could send these scales in right now. The way this is, even like that, you know, knowing that I've opened the knife, which technically voids the warranty, I could send this in, and they would probably give me brand new scales brand new standoffs, brand new hardware, and they probably wouldn't even charge me. You know, having that peace of mind is really nice. And also, I could do a blade replacement. I think it's 90 bucks. Um, it used to be a lot cheaper, but I guess everybody was taking advantage of that, which I, you know, I don't blame them. But yeah, so it, it's just nice to know that if I wanted to, I could essentially get like a brand new knife for... I don't know, maybe like half the cost, but and I think that's what we're paying. You know, when you hear about the butterfly tax, the butterfly tax, I think that's what we're paying for. But again, this is my only bench made. Um, I am looking forward to getting more bench mates, but you know, the, the, one of the problems that I've seen with the bench maids is if I'm looking to spend that $150, you know, range, like the same amount of money that you would pay for either a PM2 or a Para 3, I think you're going to get better quality in the Spyderco department. Now, when we approach like the 200, 250 mark, um, that's kind of in the range of the features that I would look for in terms of what Benchmade would offer at that entry point. But um, yeah, but just for the way things are, Benchmade 940 Osborne, this particular variant is in the M4 blade steel. This is a phenomenal hard use knife. Um, and it's going to be staying in my collection because it's the only bench made. I also like to use it for size comparisons. And it's just a, uh, a hardy, robust, solid knife that I can depend on if I need to be uh, doing some, <sighs> some crazy stuff with my knives. So that's all we got for today, guys. Thank you very much for checking out the video. And I'll see you on the next one.